Hi there, my name's Andy Wheelock. This is Coffee with the Geek. This is episode number two. I'm here at the R&M restaurant in Randolph, New York. And with me is Kimberly Moritz, the superintendent at Randolph. And I guess we'll start with a, a kind of easy question that uh, came about just by looking at your blog. And your blog is G-Town Talks. Mm -hmm. And it's been something I've been keeping up with because you do a great job of communicating your thoughts and ideas about education um, in the various roles you've had from teacher, principal, to now superintendent. So can you tell us just about your blog, how it came about, and, and what goes into your creation? Sure. First, thank you for the compliment. Um, I have been writing since 2006, and I started because like most teachers, you know, I went to a staff development session, I think it was High School's New Face, and you had to choose a three-day sequence, and I chose Will Richardson's um, sequence, and I started writing on a blog. I didn't really know that I could write or what I would write about, but for me, at that point, I was the high school principal in Gowanda, thus the name G-Town Talks, and I just started writing about the issues that I was having as a principal as a way to get the issues out of my head and, and out there. And I then started, surprisingly, people read it and gave me feedback based on what I was writing. And so that helped me and helped me to, I hope, influence the thinking of the people within my school community and also influenced my thinking. And then um, that was probably my most successful writing. Um, I was really writing it just for me um, to help um, think through some things as a principal and then it evolved as my roles evolved and I found that when I started writing as a superintendent I got a lot less feedback. Um, teachers didn't really want to comment on the blog, they went, didn't want to be known as the teacher who was commenting on the superintendent's blog so people would start emailing me separately which really kind of defeats the purpose of the blog, right? It's supposed to be a community of learnings ta learners talking to one another. Um, and now I use it primarily to uh, hopefully influence the thinking of the, all of the members of our school community. And I find that it's been really helpful because in my um, conversations with the press, oftentimes I can point them to an issue on the blog. They get direct quotes right from the blog, and oftentimes my blog posts end up repeated in the local news, which helps to get the word out. What would be some recommendations for someone, a teacher, educator, that wants to start a blog, could you give them like some simple tips of where to begin and yeah, I think how to get started? I think the most important thing is to um, to just be yourself in your writing. You know, that was I never tried to to write it in a professional um, way. I, I I mean certainly professional, but not as a professional writer. Um, so I was just writing as I would talk, and that's one of the best compliments I've had over the years is people have said, you know, when I read your blog post, I feel like you're talking to me. And, and it's impossible for me to get out and talk to every single person, so it can be a really great communication device. And I, I think just write, you know, that's, that's the thing that Will Richardson said to me in the beginning. He said, don't stress about everything. Just don't worry about the details. Don't worry about, just write. And um, that was the greatest advice I could have gotten. You know, and certainly some blog posts resonate more. Like I noticed if I include something personal, um, if I write a post about something from my childhood or something from when, um, something from parenting, that usually gets the best response. And when I write really um, educational terms, you know, my mom is in Pittsburgh and she reads my blog and she'll say, yeah, that got a little long-winded and was kind of boring, Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a good critic for me. And I, I try to realize people want to, want to hear the message, they want to hear it quickly, and then they want to move on. So I try to do that. And, and really anybody starting out should, should think about it from that same perspective. If you go on and on and on or make it all about you, nobody really wants to read that. Working with Kim is great. Um, she is a forward-thinking leader, doesn't really let obstacles get in her way, and her blog is phenomenal in how she keeps plugging away at that and her way of getting in the community to feed back to her. Tell us about some of the tech-savvy initiatives you've had at your school or some of the teachers that are uh, your tech-savvy teachers using it. We have um, some of those initiatives that we approved for this coming year 
um, involved, you know, we have a sixth grade teacher who is going to get a classroom set of iPads. And that's because she wants to do things with the Pasco probes and iBooks and Google Docs and things like that. Um, so we have teachers who are just starting with that. We have a kindergarten teacher who's going to have a classroom set of iPads because she wants to do hands-on centers with the kids and, and different apps that she can do. Probably the most um, exciting thing that we've seen, and I know it's been somewhat controversial in what I read, is the flipping the classroom model that Jeff Olson started in his seventh grade math class, and then also he's done it with some of his more advanced kids. And that, for him, has made a big connection, and I think you'll talk to him in a little while, because he he's able to use the whole class period to work with kids now. They watch the 10 or 15 minute lecture at home and then they come in and they get his full attention for the full class period. That's a huge gain to my thinking. In addition to that, um, you know, and it's not that we're saying the kid can just watch the lesson at home and the teacher does nothing. He's working probably harder than he's ever worked at answering those kids' questions during the classroom and they're succeeding more. He has some colleagues who are also going to work on flipping the classroom this year. So I'm really excited about that initiative. I think that I think the reason that's important is because it gains us more one-on-one -on -one time with kids. It's not about it's cool that he made a video and the kid can watch it at home. It's about one-on-one -on -one time to help that student. We have a chemistry teacher who's going to use some one-on-one -on -one initiatives for research and lab reports and connecting with scientists and other science students. So that would be what I would say is the most exciting part of it. Um, I think that there needs to be a caution in that um, sometimes teachers can become all about the technology and if it's not content driven it's not worthwhile it, 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 yeah it's cool to connect with people in other places but it needs to be driven by the technology by the content of the class and uh, so we try really hard to balance those two things and make sure that the decisions that we're making with technology first start with how is this going to help me better teach what i'm teaching our teachers basically were very concerned about the students just sitting on Facebook all the time, sitting on games all the time. Really, we haven't seen that a lot. I mean, you do have it, but at least I think it, the students, because it's not being blocked, aren't trying to get around it all the time. They just go, done, it's over. Whereas if they're trying to get around the filter, they're spending more time trying to get to Facebook or whatever, and by the time they come back, they're on Facebook even longer because they've had to circumvent the system. This is Edmodo um, that we're looking at now, and I started using that this past school year. Uh, basically, it's like Facebook, but it's specifically designed for schools. The teacher gets in, they set everything up, they actually create the classes, and then they get a code. And the students have to have the code to be able to join the class. So you're not just getting anybody coming in and you know who's on there. And then the teacher can actually see everything that's posted on there. So it looks like Facebook. The kids can kind of message on there like Facebook. So they do like that. But I see everything. So a kid, one kid can't message another kid and like for example bully them and I have no idea I see everything that's written on there I can erase things if there's something inappropriate and then deal with the student you know the next day when I see them so it's worked very well the kids like it they do use it um, it's an easy way for them to communicate with me you know the kids would get on there and say oh I'm having difficulty with this or that or I can't get this video to play or you know have you posted this yet and I could get right on, you know, I have the app on my phone, and then I would see when they left a message for me, and I could just get on my phone at home and reply back and say, oh, the video's here, or work this, or try this, or, you know, whatever needed to be done. So it's worked very well. Facebook or Google Plus? you seriously asking me this question? <laughs> Did Google Plus go anywhere with people? It's, I love it. Really? I love Google Plus. I'm, it's starting to become my go-to social network. No Facebook for me. Okay. Twitter or Plurk? Yeah. Twitter. Twitter or Plurk? Twitter. Facebook or Google Plus? Facebook. And that's our episode today with Coffee with the Geek from Randolph. And a special thanks to Kimberly Moritz and the r &M Restaurant. Have a great day. The app of the month this time around 
is the Edutecker app that also follows the Edutecker website. This website and app is developed by fellow New York teacher Adam Bello, and I've had the pleasure of meeting Adam at several conferences from ISTE to the NiceGate conference. And what Adam has developed with this, first of all, you get lots of little tools. One of them, you can see them here. You can get links. There's Edutecker TV, which gives some tips and tools. There's a messaging center, so you can connect with other educators. Again, you can see there's quite a lot here. You can develop contacts. Also, there's uh, a lot of educational technology links for websites and apps, so you can find really great stuff. And I have to tell you, if it's on the site, it's good. It's good quality. It's educationally relevant. And also, uh, one of the last features is you can have your own blog for free. So you can really kind of write down your tech tips and send people right to uh, your new blog. And so I really recommend this. It's a great app. It's a great uh, resource. And Adam, I think, is developing something else called the Edu Clipper. It's coming out soon. So this month's app and website, EduTecker. Thank you.